Are you excited about worshiping in person together starting August 7 in our church? I sure am. We've got just a few weeks more until that special Sabbath when we are back in person. And there's a few things that we're going to be implementing just to be on the safe side while we still figure out what this whole COVID climate entails. We have first, we are going to keep our masks on during this time just to make sure because of this Delta variant and these other considerations, we're going to keep our masks on. So that's the first point. Number two, we're going to keep socially distant and physical contact is discouraged uh, when we're back in person. So even fist bumps or, or elbow bumps or, or side hugs, uh, we're, we're discouraging that sort of connection just because we don't know. We don't know what we're up against. And we're continuing to make sure that we stay hydrated during that time. So we're gonna bring our own water bottles because the drinking fountain probably isn't the best place for everyone to be drinking out of. We will be singing together, which is what we've been looking forward to. And although we will be meeting together for discussion as part of our Sabbath schools and small groups, we won't be eating together quite yet. More details will be coming as we get closer to the date. If you have any questions, you can email me at my email address, and I'm happy to talk with you about any of your questions or concerns, and we will see each other on August 7. Thank you, Pastor Brandon, and happy Sabbath, Hollywood. I am so excited that in a few weeks, we get to worship together in person. But for those of you who can join us in person, we will be live streaming the services. So we'd still love for you to tune in, love for you to be a part of our church and part of our worship programs. We also have Zoom gatherings throughout the week um, by different ministries. Just reach out to us and we'd love to connect with you. We'd love for you to be a part of it. And if today you need prayer or during the week, please also email us and we'd love to pray for you. So we started our apocalypse series, which has been an annual summer Hollywood tradition. And we, in the Greek, apocalypse means to reveal, to uncover. So together, we will be exploring how Jesus is revealed in today's pop culture like virtual reality, as Alvin shared last week, and in anime, as Jose will briefly share, or an animated movie, as Eugene will share in his message, how Jesus is revealed in music or in different types of art, even travel, or in film. And speaking of films, we added a segment called movies are prayers i think we added it last year or maybe two years before that what year is it now i don't even know we added it <laughs> and movies are our prayers are based on um the book by josh larson and he says that movies do more than tell a good story they are expressions of raw emotions of vulnerability and they often function like prayers communicating our deepest longings, our joys, and even frustrations to a God who hears them all. So since Eugene is sharing a Disney animated movie, I wanted to share one of my favorite Disney classics, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Notre Dame? Notre Dame. I'll say Notre Dame. So this movie, this animated movie, is loosely based on the classic novel by Victor Hugo. And the plot centers on Quasimodo, the bell ringer of Notre Dame, who has a distinct look. And he spends much of his life being mistreated by the judge who raised him and also by society. So Quasimodo has a hard time fitting in. He struggles to fit in and gain acceptance until he befriends a gypsy named Esmeralda. So during the Feast of Fools Festival in one of the scenes in the movie, when Quasimodo falls victim to the cruel soldiers and townspeople, Esmeralda 
is the one who steps up and protects Quasimodo from public mockery. They were basically humiliating him and she stands up for him. Long story short, because she did that, she had to flee. And she unexpectedly finds herself trapped in Notre Dame. Frustrated by how those who are different are being mistreated. Tired of the injustice her people are experiencing. She finds herself doing something she never thought she was even worthy of doing. Praying. And this is her prayer. I don't know if you can hear me or if you're even there. I don't know if you would listen to a gypsy's prayer. Yes, I know I'm just an outcast I shouldn't speak to you Still I see your face and wonder Were you once an outcast too? He will win 
backing down from any giant And I know how this story ends Oh, I know how this story ends I'm gonna see you victory I'm gonna see you victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm gonna see you victory I'm gonna see you victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Hey guys, Terry here. Welcome to Kids Corner. Hope you guys had a good 4th of July last weekend. I'm actually taping this on the weekend of 4th of July. And we're planning kind of a big family gathering uh, on the 4th. And so I decided that I was going to uh, undertake buying new patio furniture. Unfortunately, it came like this, in a big box with pieces. Look at this. I wouldn't know what to do, but Fortunately, it also came with instructions. And as long as I have these instructions, I'm able to follow the instructions and have a successful outcome. Look, I've already put together three chairs there. And there's, uh, there's Edmund enjoying one, and there goes uh, Cynthia down to the other end of the pool. Yep, so uh, pretty soon there'll be three more chairs and there'll be an umbrella all because of the instructions. Fortunately, I have instructions to follow in order to make this mess something beautiful. Hey guys, and here it is, the final product. I promised this, check it out. Tables, chairs, all put together. If I follow the instructions, check this out. Put together some new lounge chairs, installed a fountain, and got the umbrella put together. So you see, if I follow the instructions, I can actually make, I can make it uh, work. So that's a good lesson. Follow the instructions <coughs> and you can make it work. Now I'm gonna relax. Just about the time. Oh, well, I guess I'll finish my Bible study. <laughs> I was kind of having a Bible study today anyway. I've been reading Matthew 22. And I'm right at that place where uh, the disciples asked Jesus, what's the most important commandment? And here's what he says. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So that's cool. That's good. 
And this says, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor. Oh, man. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, man. You know, I was so good at following the directions to put together all this furniture, I forgot to follow these directions. And these directions say, love my neighbor. I blew it. Hey, sorry. Oh, well. Next time I'll try to remember to follow these directions. Have a great week. Do you want a candy bar? What's your favorite kind? Maybe your favorite kind is a Kit Kat. Oh yeah, you want me to break you off a piece of that. And, or maybe your favorite candy bar is a Twix. Uh, one for me, uh, one for you. Um, uh, or maybe you're like my mom, who likes Snickers. There's a story that uh, is pretty funny that I've always laughed at. My mother told me that when she was little, her dad, my grandpa, uh, bought her a whole Snickers bar and she was just a little girl. And when she opened that candy bar, my grandfather looked over and said, can I have a bite? And my mom, being so excited about having a whole candy bar to herself, got very frustrated and she said, just take it, take it. And <laughs> she just gave the candy bar away. Um, I think, uh, that when we get a blessing from God, uh, it is right that we give him a bite. And uh, it's the same when it comes to our uh, finances. Uh, tithe is something that we give back to God. In fact, one-tenth, uh, one bite out of ten, and we give that back to God uh, because because he's given us the whole thing, and so we give him back one-tenth. And it's the way that we, as, as individuals, we contribute together and we create this church that is able to sustain itself. It's something really special that uh, you and me, we all benefit from. Uh, so I want to challenge you that when you get your blessings from God, that you give him a bite. And why? Because uh, he asked you for it, he gave it to you in the first place, and uh, you don't need the whole candy bar. Uh, I, I love these three candy bars though, because um, at least for Kit Kat and Twix, they are about sharing. And I think that that, that relationship to things, uh, freely you were given and freely you're to give to other people. Uh, that blessing I have felt many times myself, and I, I think when you look back, you can uh, see the same. So, did you like this sweet lesson? If you would like to give to the church uh, in some special way, uh, to a special ministry, or something that you want to invest in, then you can go to give.hollywoodadventist.org, and you can give online that way. Thank you for your gifts and for your investments into our church community. Hello and happy Sabbath to you. I gotta say I love this time of year because I think the Apocalypse series is probably one of my favorite series that we have here at Hollywood. And I'm excited to share this with you. I um, love uh, anime. And um, anime is a uh, m mainly Japanese um, uh, animation. Uh, I guess that's where they came up with the word anime. And um, it stems from manga. So manga is a comic book form that um, they have culturally and people read them like religiously. And um, then they make the anime. So it's kind of like a, a, a live action of it. Not live though, but like animation. <laughs> and I recently got obsessed with one called Haikyuu, which uh, stands for volleyball, essentially. It follows this young boy named Shoyo Hinata. 
and he is this ball of energy who is obsessed with volleyball but yet doesn't have the support or team because he starts in middle school and he is trying to uh, uh, build a team and and play volleyball that's all he wants to do um, but he doesn't know the rules he doesn't know um, everything but his his agility his uh, jumping skills his energy of of being able uh, his endurance i guess his his abilities physically as an athlete are like subpar he's phenomenal um but yet he still needs to learn how to play and then it follows tobio Koge kageyama <laughs> and he is a natural talent uh he knows the sport very well and he uh loves the sport just as passionately as Shoyo Hinata. Um, and they literally play each other. And in, in middle school, um, there's tension built. And then they come to their, their, their high school year of playing. And they find out that they're going to the same high school. And what once was their competitive spirits towards each other is now that they are now allies and what I love about this show is it highlights the ideas of teamwork and building and trust and faith this game you cannot play alone so no matter how skilled these individuals were or are um, they couldn't do it alone they couldn't bump, set, and spike these balls uh, by themselves. It was a team sport. It was a team effort. And the game didn't stop until the ball hit the ground. And so literally, uh, it got me thinking. And I started saying to myself, like, isn't this kind of like life? Where there's moments in our lives where we're trying to keep a ball up, but sometimes we can't do it by ourselves. And the thing about I realized with God and, and on this journey with him, the thing is, is that we sometimes think we are doing everything alone. We think that we are on this journey by ourselves. But scripture talks about how um, we are not alone in this, that God has put on this earth more people to be for you and with you rather than against you and your enemy. We are in this together. We are in this life together. Man was not made to be alone. So cherish the team that you have with you and enough to be able to trust you on this journey that we call life and to love one another, to care for one another, to lift each other up, to not tear each other down to give encouragement in spite of the troubling times of this life we call a game or game that we call a life <laughs> and win as much as you can and pick yourself up for the times that you lose. May God bless you and keep you. yourself stuck in the middle of the sea I'll sail the world to find you and if you ever find yourself lost in the dark and you can't see I'll be the light to guide you I'll find out what we're made of we are called to help our friends in need You can count on me Like one, two, three I'll be there And I know when I need it I can count on you Like four, three, two You'll be there 
Cause that's what friends are supposed to do Oh yeah If you're tossing and you're turning and you just can't fall asleep I'll sing a song beside you And if you ever forget how much you really mean to me Every day I will remind you To find out what we're made of when we are called to help our friends in need You can count on me Like one, two, three And I'll be there And I know when I need it I can count on you Like four, three, two And you'll be there Cause that's what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah. Ba ba da ba da 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 da. You'll always have my shoulder when you cry. I'll never let go. Never say goodbye You know you can't count on me Like one, two, three And I'll be there And I know when I need it I can count on you Like four, three, two And you'll be there that's what friends are supposed to do, oh yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can count on me cause I can count on you Happy Sabbath again. Welcome to the Apocalypse series. I uh, hope you've been enjoying it so far. We've had one. I will be the second one going up. Um, I thought that last week's uh, sermon that Auburn gave us about uh, VR games was great about teamwork. And that's the thing I enjoy about these apocalypse series is the, um, the ways that God talks to us still in ways that are non-traditional. While looking back over the last year, I had a couple things that I thought would make a good sermon for, for the apocalypse series. And I uh, kind of numbered them in their priority from like, uh, I think one through, I think I came up with like seven things that I was like, yeah, these could fit. And as I was going, narrowing down which ones to choose from, I kind of got into a fight with uh, the number one spot, three and five. And I thought the odds are against me on this one. Might as well stick with Onward. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the messages that you continue to Give us, thank you for continuing to speak through us and with us. And just uh, thank you for never, never giving up on us. Guide us as we continue to go throughout the rest of this uh, pandemic. Thank you for keeping us safe in 2020. Guide us throughout the rest of this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Going out to the movies was something I greatly missed while sheltering in place and weathering out this pandemic. I miss the big screen, reclining seats, immersive digital audio, the smell of popcorn, freshly popped, sticky floors, getting your seats, assigned seat mixed up with someone else and figuring it out as soon as the movie starts. Well, some things I don't miss. But while everything hit the pause button last year, I kept coming back to movies. My dad and I, don't have a lot of sim similar interests. For one, he loves sports. I mean, he'll watch anything that involves phys physicality and competition. I could care less about being a spectator at a sporting event unless it's with people that I want to hang around with. And it becomes more of a, a social gathering than me being there just for sports. Anyway, <clears throat> we both love movies. 
my parents are getting old and when the pandemic hit, they were in the at risk uh, age range. Since I started working remotely, I made the choice to go back home with them and keep them mostly indoors and keep them safe. So uh, that was one thing I was willing to sacrifice to help keep my loved ones um, safe. With sporting events shutting down and a constant news stream filled with dire reports of infections and death tolls, my dad would ask me, what new movies do you have? In that simple request, he said that we were all looking for a little escape and I couldn't agree with him more. My dad will watch anything. It just has to be a good and compelling story and sometimes uh, a little on the easier to follow side. I guess I get the good and compelling stories or the, I gravitate towards, towards good and compelling stories from him. Where my mom is the complete opposite when it comes to movies. I would ask both of them what they wanted to watch, looking for a genre to select from. My dad's default would be what I mentioned earlier, what's new, where my mom would ask Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie. I had to tell her, you know they're not together anymore, right? Onward as a movie stuck with me. It came out in March, 2020, right before the pandemic shut everything down. It's directed by Dan Scanlon, written by Scanlon, Josh Headley, and Keith Bunin. So you can watch Onward now on Disney Plus. It's a Pixar Disney movie. It's a uh, computer animated. And it takes place in a fantasy world where Ian and Barley are brothers. And they are two brothers that happen to be elves. They are teenagers and teenage life without a father is difficult. Both boys carry the weight of their father's absence differently. Ian, the youngest, is turning 16. He's never met his dad because his dad died before he could uh, have memories but he's excited to finally fit into one of his dad's old college sweatshirts. He wants to be just like his dad. He goes so far to make a checklist of stuff he doesn't like about himself, which is in contrast against all the good things he's heard about his dad from other people. If only I could be more like my dad, life would be so much better and easier, he thinks. He's been told things about his dad his dad from people who met him when he was still alive. His dad was confident, funny, and wore purple socks. This represents everything Ian is not, which only adds to the pain of not having a dad. Feeling inadequate, Ian goes through life cautious of everything, too scared to socialize, too scared to learn to drive, and too scared to believe in himself for most of the movie. On the other hand, Barley has dealt with the loss in the opposite way. He chooses to harden himself and fear nothing, constantly challenges authority, immerses himself in fantasy games and role-playing games, and hides behind a tough, confident exterior. These brothers are complete opposites, polar opposites, and two examples of how we can respond to loss, grief, and the longing for the love of a father. As earthly beings, we are prone to failures, and it doesn't matter whose fault it is. In our world, we have broken relationships caused by death, divorce, absence, abuse, pressure, and the list goes on and on. But our Heavenly Father promises so much more than what's here on earth. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has, yet, has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is found in verse John chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. At the heart of the movie onward, the story is about a son looking to see and be with his father. If that doesn't resonate with you as a Christian, then I'm not sure what will. A lot of people treat God as a genie in a bottle that grants wishes or a Santa figure. If I do good, I will be rewarded. It's sort of a barter system. 
Have you ever prayed and prayed for something but never received it? I bet we've all been Ian at some point in our lives. We want something so bad that we can't think of why we can't have it. It would make our lives so much easier that we can't think of why someone would say, no, it won't. But God answers all our prayers. Sometimes they aren't the answer that we are looking for. And sometimes they aren't answered in the way that we want. Sometimes it's just a foot tap. Not all scars that make people who they are are visible. You might. So there's going to be spoilers if you haven't seen this movie, but it is available to watch. And you've had a year to sort of find this movie. So as the, the Lightfoot brothers, Ian and Barley, embark on their quest, we see an evolution from shame to tentative trust, back to embarrassment, then joy, self-sacrifice, and then true brotherly affection. They learn not to see just the weaknesses in one another, but instead to accept and love one another as they are, brokenness and all. Sometimes sacrifices need to be made for the ones we love. Be prepared to make sacrifices and those kinds of sacrifices because the results may turn out better than we could ever imagine. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us all to get eternal life. The least we can do here on this earth is to love him and love one another as he loved us. Looking specifically as uh, at Onward in Ian and Barley, Ian wants to have a moment with his dad because he never, he doesn't have memories. He was too young to form memories when his father was alive. And Barley, we find out, well, first we, we, we learn that he likes his van. A lot of work goes into his van. It's a physical thing. It's a physical, also it's a physical expression of who he is as a person. But we then find out that Barley has a memory of his dad, and it's the last memory that's not a great memory because his dad was sick, and that's how his dad died. So these two brothers have different things that they want to accomplish, and they have different things that they cherish. And looking at both of them, if they weren't related, they would not be friends. They don't run in the same social circles and they have completely different interests. It's easy to be friends with someone when they're at the highest of the highs, the best of their best. It takes work and effort to be with them in their darkness. What I'm gonna read now is found in Luke 6, 32 to 36. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemy, love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. If we love God, we know God. And if we have love, we know God. John 15, 13 reads, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. 1 John 4, 7 reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. So why is this so important? Because you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. It's important because if God is our Father, we want to reflect who our father is and who God is to other people that do not know God. How will they know God 
if not for us. So that's why it's important to love people and to love people who are different from us, who we don't normally seek out and befriend. And, and in this world of onward, magic is used a lot, but magic isn't something that's just confined to the fantasy genre. Love is magic. The definition of magic is the power of apparently influencing the course of events by using mysterious or supernatural forces. Love isn't about waving a wand and reciting a spell. It's about taking something that wasn't there and making it into what you need. It's magic to see somebody who who has the odds stacked up against them. Like they came from a broken home. They came from abuse. They came from the wrong side of the tracks, but yet they're able to find love with someone and maybe ultimately find love with God. To me, that's magic because the ways of this world on this earth say that that person should be written off. But it takes love to get to know them and see that there's something in there that is worth loving. Jesus taught that taught us that the ways of the world run contrary to God's ways, where worldly wisdom says that profit takes precedent over people and that exclusion leads to safety. Jesus put people first, no matter who they are or were, despite the risk. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you. And do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Matthew 5, 38 through 42. This uses the term enemy um, but that's, you can also apply that to just somebody you don't like. It doesn't have to be an evil person. It doesn't have to be somebody who's completely despicable. It can just be somebody you don't agree with, somebody who annoys you, somebody who is a jerk to you. If you start to love them, that will magically turn them from somebody you find annoying into somebody who is your friend. And how many times have we been the, the person of, that, uh, of the other side where we have been a jerk to somebody and they showed kindness to us and we changed our relationship with them? I do not understand what I do for what I want to do I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is living sin in me that does it. That's found, that tongue twister is found in Romans 7, verses 15 through 20. The Lightfoot brothers, Ian and Barley, face some dangerous situations as they search for a way to meet their father. 
and they find themselves rejected by those around them that follow more socially conventional paths. But they also experience the joy of living in their identities, a joy that Christians experience when we accept our calling. Like let's take Barley for instance. He is somebody who is just railing against authority at every turn he can get. He is viewed by these uh, people that don't even know him, that just see his actions, that he's been written off by society. He's a piece of work. He's, uh, he's not worth the effort. The, he's not worth the time of day. These people don't even know him. And they've already uh, judged him based on what he looks like and how he and how how uh, how unconventional he is to what their view of things are. So in in nine, in sixteen seventy, Pascal gives us the idea that we all have a God shaped hole in our hearts, a wound. This applies to Barley in the way that he's been dealing with his father's loss or the loss of his father is that we have a God-shaped hole in all of us, a God-shaped hole in all of our hearts. And in Barley's case, he's been filling it with um, uh, role-playing games, fantasy games, uh, kind of going to protests for historical landmarks. He's trying to fill this void in his heart with all kinds of things, his interests, where his, uh, his passions lie. But this hole in his heart is something that can only be filled by God, who gives us the peace that passes understanding. In a similar way, Ian does the same thing, where he wants to be socially accepted. He wants to be more outgoing and extroverted like his dad was and to have people tell stories of how how friendly he is but he fills it with caution with fear of rejection with uh too much caution in some cases so both brothers are dealing with this god-shaped hole in their heart in different ways but we as Christians, we can walk away with an even greater hope. Though we have ex each experienced brokenness with our earthly family, we believe in a God who came to earth and now calls us brothers and sisters, co-heirs of eternity, Hebrews 2, 10 through 13. God's sacrificial love of Jesus is ever present and onward. One of the most moving things in this film is the climax. So here's a spoiler if you haven't seen the movie. Ian chooses to sacrifice the one thing that he has always dreamed of, and that is having a moment, having time with his father, being able to have a memory, a good memory. And he chooses to sacrifice this wish, this desire, this prayer, so that his brother Barley can have one last good memory and moment with his dad. The spell works and Barley has this one-on-one -on -one quality time with his dad as the, as the sun sets, because that's when the, the spell is over. It, it, there's a time limit on this thing. Without a doubt, we see Christ-like Christ -like love in action with Ian's sacrifice. Jesus not only loves us with the perfect love of a brother, but he willingly sacrificed himself and of himself, his life and his pleasure in exchange for us, annoyances and all, for us who are imperfect. No matter how broken our homes, hearts, and relationships may be, God never leaves us alone, whether through siblings, mothers, or even his very presence, God remains faithful to every heartache, and we know that one day we will be welcomed into the eternal family in heaven as beloved sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. As we sit here on Sabbath and watch church, I'd like to say that Onward provides hope. About midway through the movie, Ian Barley and half of their dad dance together for a split second, and they have the father they've been looking for. 
It's a moment. It's only a moment. It's, it's full of laughter, goofiness, but it's still incomplete. Not only is their father not 100% there, but he can't talk to them. He can't look them in the eye. And the biggest thing is that their mother isn't present. So while this moment is happy and it's a moment of celebration, it's incomplete. What's also incomplete about this moment is that Ian and Barley are not at the end of their journey in the movie. They still see what makes each other annoying to them. But in this moment, they're able to accept each other and love each other and share in the happiness and the love. Top half missing. The mom is out there frantically looking for her boys. So whether or not you've experienced one of these picturesque moments, these perfect moments, remember that these moments are incomplete here on this earth. It is only also a moment. Church online is only a moment. The pandemic is only a moment. But God, our Heavenly Father, is eternal. And our hope in Him is eternal. Do not store up yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermins destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in, in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 19, 19 through 21. One day there will be cheering, singing and dancing for all eternity. Tears will be wiped away. Every broken heart will be healed and we will find fullness, restoration and happiness we've never known when we're reunited with our heavenly father. Till then, how do we deal with life here on this broken world? Well, we, we rely on our family. We rely on our friends because friends are the family that we choose. I couldn't find who originated the saying, but that doesn't make it any less true. We count on friends and family, and we choose to be the ones that friends and family can count on. We help each other by carrying the burdens of a heavy load. T.A. Webb writes, a burden shared is a burden halved. We love unconditionally, no matter what people look like on the outside. We love who they are on the inside because we are all family. We love family because their scars make them who they are. Family loves us because of the scars that make us who we are. And when we have family, burden can be shared. And that makes our load light. A stranger is a friend whose story you just haven't heard. Turn a stranger into family by listening and loving. That is, is what I got out of Onward. And I hope that you, if you haven't watched it, you can still watch it and get these, these God messages from this movie, this wonderful movie. So in this moment, I would challenge you to open your ears and close your eyes. That way you can listen to what God is whispering to you. It might be through a stranger, might be through a song, might be through a movie or a piece of literature that you're reading. But God is always talking to us. Our Father is always talking to us. Thank you for listening. Let's, uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the messages that you give us, the, the little nuggets that you throw our way, that we may not know that they're you, but we, we have a familiarity with what it reminds us, what it inspires in us. Please continue to speak to us and through us in ways that we do not expect and help us to keep a listening ear for these things. And bless us in this moment of this pandemic and bless us so that we have moments beyond the pandemic. 
Please continue to keep us safe. Thank you, especially for keeping us safe in 2020. Guide us throughout the rest of 2021 and onward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Understands the scars made me who I am through the drifting sands of time. I got your back, and you got mine. And if you bear a heavy load, I'll be the wheels, I'll be the road. I'll see us through, through thick and thin. For love and loss until the end Because you carried me with you From the highest of the peaks To the darkness of the blues I was just too blind to see Like a lighthouse in this storm You were always guiding me Yeah, it's true you carried me with you And from the day it all began Yeah, you were there, you took my hand And when I heard a bit too deep You watched me as I fell asleep And when my head was in the clouds You found a way Pull me out You picked my heart up off the ground And showed me love was all around Because you carried me with you From the highest of the peaks To the darkness of the blue I was just too blind to see like a lighthouse in this storm You were always guiding me Yeah, it's true You carried me with you Oh, we'll be sitting on the world together Watching as the days turn into night We know how to brave the stormy weather and we're never giving up without a fight If you should ever bear a heavy load I'll be your wheels, I'll be the road I'll see us through to thick and thin For love and loss until the end Because you carried me with you from the highest of the peaks to the darkness of the blue I was just too blind to see Like a lighthouse in this storm You were always guiding me Yeah, it's true You carried me with you Oh, you carried me Friends, new family, thank you for joining us today. Stay safe, and we will see you next week at home. Take care, and bye for now. You are my ecosystem. You are the air I'm breathing. In the endless wasteland, you are my rushing fountain. You are my ecosystem. No matter what the weather You are my better option No matter what I'm facing You are water on the rock And I'll thirst no more You'll hold on my arms when I'm battle-torn Away
oasis within me You're the oasis within me You are colors in the sky After 40 rains in the thick of the night You're the break of day Oasis within me You're the oasis within me the thing I've needed in each and every season and I really mean it yeah I really mean it and you are water from the rock and I'll thirst no more you're holding my arms when I'm battle torn oasis within me you're the oasis within me you are colors in the sky after 40 rains in the thick of the night you're the break of It's you, you are my escape.